Hello everyone, welcome back to the Game Theory Fundamentals episode 13, Tragedy of the Common. And this happens to be our last episode as well, so enjoy! Let's take a look at a classic example from a 1968 essay by Garth Hardin, where he describes herdsmen sharing a common pasture. Imagine three herdsmen, A, B, and C, sharing a common pasture. Each owns a cow, a goat, and a sheep. To maximize the production of the milk, they are thinking of adding more and more animals. At first, it seems beneficial for each herdsman, up until a certain point where the productivity of those animals are starting to decline. So this is a classic example of the tragedy of the commons. It is an economic theory describing a situation where individuals acting in their own self-interest end up depleting or degrading a shared resource, even though it's not in the long-term interest of anyone. Whenever there is a shared resource available for use by multiple individuals, but whose supply is finite or can be depleted, like forests, fisheries, clean water sources, parks, roads, or parking spaces, and if there exists rational individuals that maximize their own utility or self-interest, then we will have the tragedy of the commons. Here are some examples. Fishermen offer fishing a stock, leading to its collapse. A company choosing to pollute to save on waste treatment costs, ignoring the environmental impact. Individuals contributing to traffic jams by choosing to drive alone rather than taking public transportation. The tragedy of the commons teaches us that unregulated use is destructive. If a resource is open to everyone without any limits, it's likely to be overexploited. The value of collective action. Solutions to this problem often involve forms of regulation, rules, social agreements, a shift away from purely self-interested behavior. Here is a breakdown of various strategies to solve the tragedy of the commons. Note that no single best solution exists. And the appropriate strategy depends on the specific resource and circumstances, and sometimes we might need to mix some of those so that we will get the optimal solution. But here they are. Government regulation. Rules and limits. We can set some quotas, limits on use, or creating restricted zones, like fishing quotas, pollution caps, protected areas, and so on. Taxes or fees. Imposing taxes or fees on the use of the resources to discourage overuse and raise funds for its management. Enforcement Adequate monitoring and enforcement of the regulations with penalties for those acting against the common good. Privatization Dividing and assigning ownership Dividing the common resources into smaller, individually owned units this creates a direct incentive for owners to manage their portion sustainably for long-term gain. But there are potential downsides to this privatization. What if some people can't afford to own a piece of the resource? Does everyone get a fair shot at the benefits? Could privatization restrict access to the resource for some who might have depended on it for their livelihood? Could creating private ownership lead to other environmental problems, such as neglecting the land for short-term profit? Communal management Communities establishing their own rules, monitoring systems, and enforcement mechanisms to manage the resource for the benefit of all. Social norms and education Educating users about the long-term consequences of over-exploitations and the benefits of conservation. Technological solutions Monitoring and tracking Using technology to monitor resource use, track changes, and detect overuse. Alternative resources 
developing alternatives or substitutes to reduce pressure on a common resource. So, that's it for today, and with it, our journey ends with the game theory fundamentals. So thank you so much for watching and please subscribe to our channel so that you won't miss out on the next game theory adventures. Till then!